Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with a Hangout and Highlight session. And today we are connecting with Sister Rosemary Ara, an amazing lady doing some great things to make a positive difference in our world. And uh, truly grateful that the big man has allowed us to cross paths. And I'm excited to have her on just to continue to share her journey and highlight her. So first, uh, Sister Rosemary, thank you so much for taking time to hang out with the Success Chronicles. Thank you, Chief. It's good to have you again. I'm yeah. very excited for the last interview and just having the opportunity to be closer and to have this interview. I'm excited about it. Well, let's go. Well, uh, just tell tell the audience a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, what, what you do and uh, so they have an idea of who you are. Okay, I am Sister Rosemary Ara. I'm a religious in the congregation of the Handmaids of the Holy Child Jesus. Uh, we are founded in Africa by an English lady and uh, by an English, English sister. And the main goal is to provide um, hope for vulnerable people, especially women, girls, and children. And uh, we are more than 90 years old as a congregation. And we are looking forward to celebrating our centenary in a few years' time. So we are in 13 countries in the world. And most of our mission is in Africa. And working in schools, in hospitals, in uh, with social services, pastoral work. And missionary work wherever we see the need to respond to Christ's call. So good. Um, so much greatness, goodness uh, that you, you all provide to our world. And so I just want to say for me, you know, just thank you uh, for your, your service and your commitment. Because um, yeah. I know it's it's not an easy task, and I know, you know, as we've talked before, you know, some of the things that are involved with, you know, the commitments and you know, long term things and traveling and all of those things to yeah. make sure some of the stories that we've talked about of things that have happened, like at the missions and stuff. Yeah. But but thank you so much for that. But I just want to kind of just just talk with you today and. I think the first thing, just find it like what's on your heart, you know, some sometime what's what's um what's tugging at your heart currently? Um now the last time I spoke with you, I just moved to a new school. Mm -hmm. And I had worked in that school before. I was uh, when I left the United States, I was assigned to that school. It was a middle high school for boys and girls. Mm -hmm. and a boarding facility. And after four years, I was transferred to an all-girls school, <clears throat> and I was there for five years. And uh, last year, I was asked to go back to the former school where I was. And now it is K through 12. So, wow. Yeah. And um, the interesting thing is I went back there, and all the work I did for four years when I was there was destroyed mm -hmm. because we had we have been experiencing an internal conflict between two regions in uh, in Cameroon for the past eight years. And in spite of that, in spite of the violence, uh, one of the things that has been clear to missionaries, to priests, to religious, to the bishops, and all people who are engaged in this work of helping people 
is that the education of children cannot wait for the war to be over. Because even if a child loses one year of school, it is going to be impactful all their life. So uh, we are putting ourselves in danger because that is what it is uh, daily to make sure that kids have an education. And as tough as it is, uh, we, when I say we, because I live in a community, uh, we have three sisters in that area and we are just dealing with different situations that, especially trauma. Um, the village where I work, because the school is situated in a village, is called Wosing in Bali. And the devastation of the after effects of the attack in that community is going to take us a very long time to uh, to work on because uh, kids experience a lot of trauma. They lose, they lost their parents. Some of them lost their parents. Some of them had their homes burnt down. Everything, every just everything, just like everything they ever had was destroyed. And so, having those children in a school is a little bit of a challenge without even having the resources to properly take care of their emotional and psychological issues before you talk about academics, because, right. you know, Strong. we educators, we always want to make sure that the kids get it. But how can a kid get it when they, are, they have a lot more issues to deal with? And for some of them, those issues are more important than the academics you're trying to present to them. So daily, we um, welcome children who come to school. They are just discouraged. They are just there because they were asked to come. But the ability for them to sit down and really enjoy what education is, is very challenging to the population we deal with. And also, um, as a response to the crisis, we realized that uh, there are so many vulnerable population. There are women, there are men, there are children, there are teenage girls who, in the course of these uh, uh, situations, they are victims of early pregnancy, of uh, rejection, of abandonment. And so we we have to deal with all of this in the community that we we work in. And there is no way you can go and preach Christ to someone who is hurting without addressing the hurt. So that is what we we have really we are lucky that God brought that awareness to us that don't just focus on fixing, but focus on what happened and how we can be able to uh, bring hope and healing to a population that is hurting. So those are the things that are in my heart. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah. I have I have been here for the past two weeks just to have some sort of a mental breakthrough mm -hmm. because when you're dealing with uh, very tough issues like that, it is important also to do some self-care, to be able to have the strength, the clarity of mind, to be able to work with uh, the victims that we encounter. Yeah, I think, um, again, uh, like we like we started off, um, again, I want to say thank you for what you do and how yeah. you do what you do. Um, you know, being a longtime educator as well. And being in, well, first growing up in different in a different environment, as well as being in different environments as an educator, I wholeheartedly understand the fact that when you talk about meeting their needs, yeah. right? There's like they don't care about math if their if their stomachs hurt from being hungry, right? Yeah. <laughs> like like <laughs> the, math and science is not important. Like no, I need no, no, something no, no. in my stomach. I'm yeah. thirsty. I'm hungry. Like. <laughs> You know, those kind of things. And so I think it's a blessing to have uh, 
to for students to be in environments where they have people around them that strive to meet their needs, right? Yes. I think the people that strive to help them with the pain that they're going through. And I think what that does is it makes for an environment that's conducive to growth. It makes for an environment yeah. that's conducive to learning, but mm -hmm. but it all stems from love. Right. Yeah. And I think when you when you have that love and show that love, you will receive that love on the other end. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I believe that um, I think I got this some years ago. Uh, the understanding that I can only reach the children and the population I work with when I show them love. And love is a verb. Yes, so it is action. So a child is crying. I give the child a walk and find out what's going on. You know, that alone gives that connection where the child feels this person cares. Uh, but if I stand a distance and I ask what is going on, it's different from giving a walk and bringing the kid. So uh, just being aware of the various actions that can can connect and make a person feel loved. And you, you said you thought, said something about a child coming to school hungry and not doing math. And that is really, really valid because um, like the population I deal with, I, I took about a month to notice that most of them come to school without breakfast. And some of them stay in school and just begging from their friends to eat uh, just to sustain themselves for the day. And when it's not like here where uh, in most schools they have the cafeteria, they come to school, go to the cafeteria before going to class. No, they come to school and go to class. So... Just thinking about how can we make it easier because food is one of those things that attracts both adults and children. And if there is food, you people show up. <laughs> they may not show up for what you are doing, but they may show, they may show up for the food. So just realizing that um, if we are able to provide food for the kids, it will make it easier for them to come to school. That is even a big motivator that, or oh, they are sure that at least once a day they can have, they can eat food that will enable them to learn. And so um, uh, we, I had this conversation with Amy, Amy Pikeli, mm -hmm. and uh, because that time it was really hard. I was dealing with a lot of behavior issues with the kids. And when I realized that it had to do with their stomach, I shared that with her and she said, sister, I'm going to raise some money for you to give them food. So we did that last term and uh, we are still working on making it um, a reality for the kids in that school to be able to have food. We should have food in the school always. <laughs> so even if they eat at home or they don't eat at home, they are sure that when they come to school, at least once a day, we are going to feed them. We are going to feed their stomachs as well as feed their heads. So just making that connection is one thing we are adding to our mission then. And we can do that on our own because we wouldn't have been able to do that if Amy did not come to our, to our rescue uh, last school year. And we are still, um, I'm still giving out that message to people who know me and people who listen to me that it is possible to, I mean, that is one of the breakthrough for us because when we did the first week of school feeding, we were shocked that some of the kids who used to be a problem, you know, every time it was like, he has done this, he has hit the other child, he has thrown a paper at the teacher. Some of those behaviors were just taken care of because we explained to them that 
we want them to learn, but as well, we want them to be safe in school. And so when we started that, it just made it, it made a whole lot of difference. And that is the law we are talking about. It's an action. It's an, it, it is an action that touches the heart of the child. And it is an action that also relieves a teacher to be able to um, teach without inter, inter, interruption. Because the worst thing for a teacher is you have prepared your lesson and you come to school and you cannot deliver because there are some kids who are disruptive. So I think um, putting love in action is one of the things that we really uh, want to make sure we are carrying on in the areas where we work. I think, too, um, for me, I'll show up and I'll act right for food, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, and I'm a grown man. Hey, food works. <laughs> it works. It, it no, has. but but I, but I think it does. You know, in all seriousness, I think uh, that's an extra step, right? I love how you talked about. Um, you know, we want to feed the stomach, but we and we also want to feed the mind, right? Yeah. And I think um, you know, a lot of times when we get caught up in just feeding the mind. Uh, you don't get the maximum result that you want, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I think when you like the Bloom's taxonomy, right? When you strive to meet all the needs, um, you know, along that, you know, that that hierarchy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're gonna get the maximum result for that. And and it and it comes through as genuine, right? It yeah. comes through as love, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I, I want you to do this because I want you to do this. Like, no, I care about you and I need you to do this. Yes. Right. But know that I'm also here to help you get through it. You're not on your own. And just as me saying that, like it gave me a sense of peace. Just me saying that to you, it gave me a sense of peace because I was just kind of reflecting on the love that I received growing up from teachers and people in my community. And um and I mean, even now, you know, the people that I've worked with are uh, being in great environments where people show love and support and they don't have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, but then now I think it it makes me think about did you hit on you talked about having a mental break. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's important, you know, those people that are that are servant leaders, you know, mm -hmm. um, faith leaders community leaders, I think it's important that they understand the high stress, um, the, ex you know, the physical, mental, emotional draining that it does. And yeah. I think you have to have an awareness of that. Um, you know, um, my, one of my pastors, you know, they, they take sabbaticals, right. You know, just to make sure that, that, that they are on point so that they can give the best that they can to others. So talk to me a little bit about that. You know, why do you feel that that's important? Yeah, it's important because it's just like, you know, when you enter a plane and they are giving all that instruction and telling you when the max falls, put the max on yourself first before you put on a child. Because if you are not alive, you're not going to take care of that child. So I think it's the same principle that I live with, that I must be able to take care of myself mentally and physically in order to be able to take care of others. Because if I am not sound, if I am, not, if I am sick, I cannot work. So I need to be healthy to be able to work. And so um, with the high trauma that we all experience daily, it is not like we have a choice. We just experience it. And so we, we as the leaders need to find time to step out and be able to reconnect with ourselves, with our purpose, with our mission, to be able to provide more services for the people we work with. And so that is just what I felt that um, having this time out to, um, I attended a, conf a, a workshop, attended a think tank, and just connected with some other people who are doing similar work that I'm doing to be able to refresh myself in order to go stronger. 
uh, to get back to work. So good, so good. The the community and and kids are so blessed to have you. Um, as we close, I love for you to get an opportunity to share. You know, you talked about. Uh, you know, some of the needs that you all need, like if, if, you know, some of the people, viewers that are watching, checking it out, you know, would like to help and, and send, you know, items or money, if you will, or to the cause to help feed those kids, right. So that they can learn, like we talked about, uh, where yeah. would you like for them to go to, to reach out to you, to connect with you, to help with that? Yeah. Um, some of the needs we have, I told you earlier that I, was in that school and I went back there. This is my second time. Mm -hmm. I we have uh, we we closed down the school for three years and we reopened it in 2021. But as a day school. So the boarding part, the dormitories, the refectory and all those parts that the students who stay in school use, they have not been used for five years. And you can imagine going to a place that has not been used for five years, what that means. Yeah. And uh, we, are, we are hoping to renovate those areas again to house children in school because it was difficult for us to do that because of security. But now things are better. We are able to... The idea of education cannot wait is still carrying the um the, the majority of thinking so we believe that now we can do the renovation of the dormitories and reinstate the place back for the kids to have an atmosphere where they can learn so um in our fundraising efforts we uh, we connected with our mission office here in Houston Mm -hmm. uh, where people can send their tax deductible donations. And um, I don't know whether I should send that to you or I should just say it. Um, the address is um, checks yeah, can be. Let's yeah. do both. Yeah, let's 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 put let's say it and then send it to me and I'll put it in the notes uh, so that okay. people can check it out as well. Yes, yeah, so we make checks to handmaids of the Holy Child Jesus and we memo Anchila Cameroon. And the address is um, 8011 Aleta Street, Houston, Texas 77061. Okay. Yes. And Actually, our goal is to, that if we have to work with the kids this year well and be able to provide for their needs, their feeding and their, um, their environment, we are hoping that with this fundraising efforts we are making, if we are able to raise $75,000, yeah. we can do that work. And we have divided it into what, uh, the renovation of the dormitories, the boys' dormitory, the girls' dormitory, the repertory, and uh, providing a security a fence behind the girls' dormitory because um, the the environment, the the property is big, and so we cannot go on fencing the whole place. But we just want to make sure that the girls have more security where uh, to get into their space, you need a little bit of effort to be able to get there. So we are hoping that if someone is interested in our work, you can take one thing and raise funds for and support us to do that. Or if you're interested in um, feeding the kids, it's $3 a day. I mean, imagine $3 can give a child, can make a child happy for the whole day. And so we are looking at working with about 500 kids this, this school year for both the elementary and the secondary school. And so those are some of our financial needs that we have. And we just know that there are people out there who want to do things for, yep. uh, for a struggling population, but they don't know how to get to them. Yes. So through our mission office here in the U.S., 
we we work with people to be able to do tax deductible donations and uh, provide support for our mission in Africa. So good. Well, yeah. again, Sister Rosemary, it's always a it's always a pleasure to see you and catch up with you. Yes. Um, <laughs> Again, thank you so much for all you do, and I wish you continued success. Yes, thank you, Chip. Thank you for this opportunity to connect with you again. I miss seeing you in person. I, I hope know. next time that will happen. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. For sure, we will make it happen. I got the storm hit us this time, and then I'm about to head out of town for an event. So. It just hit at a rough time, and um, I appreciate your patience, but definitely we will we will make that happen. Okay, okay. So I'm going to send that information to you, and yes, also a short, a short video of uh, where I work and the destruction mm. that took place in the area. Yes, that that'd be awesome. We'd love to yes. see that. Okay, all right. All right. Well, thank you, and thank you guys for checking out this episode, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. All right. Thank you. God bless. Go get it.